Hello and welcome to Jomez Pro. You are watching the 2021 Santa Cruz Masters Cup on the PDGA National Tour. We are, of course, in Santa Cruz, California at the Story de la Viega Disc Golf Course. Big Sexy Berry commentary, Nate Sexton, Paul Uliberry, and Jeremy Coley. Garrett Gerthy, our defending champion from two years ago. 27 under par, a very impressive score for three rounds out here at Dela. Obviously, that format included two rounds on the famed Dela course and one on the golf course. Paul McBeth is also on the group, and we've got Sean Brookman, the amateur champion, the traditional three prior champions, and the amateur champion teeing off as our feature group, as Ricky Waisaki. The location of the famed Raptor putt back in 2016. Big breakout win for Ricky back then. Looking at hole one, it starts off long here. Only 345 officially, but this hole is so uphill that I think it plays closer to 425 or 430 feet. Really heavy roll away risk as you come into this green. Hitting those rock or those bricks, not necessarily a good thing. It's very common to see the disc just take off to the right. First on the tee of our featured card. The defending Masters Cup champion from Hawthorne, Florida, Garrett Gerthy. That was an announcement on the tee box that Garrett has been waiting two years to hear. His biggest win of Garrett's career. Yeah, what we're going to see in this round is angle control. Oh. is going to be the key. This turns over a little too much, and obviously it's in those trees. One thing to note about this course and California in general is that the two-meter rule will, will be Next in effect. Five-time Masters Cup champion from Huntington Beach, Paul McBeth. Which means anything turned over into those bushy trees on the right have a, a really good chance of staying up there. McBeth famously on that quest to try to catch Ken Climo in world titles. That's a long way coming, but I believe... He is tied with Ken Climo for five Masters Cup titles, so something on the line for him this weekend, trying to go for the all-time most wins in the MPO division, and that's a good way to start. Perfect shot there. That's what you want to do. Play it up that hill on the left above all the retaining wall stuff and then slide your way back down. I think this is just perfect from Paul. Yeah, by the time it hits Heiser angle, it's already kind of matching the hillside. And it doesn't have much left on it. That's perfect. The advanced amateur division last month from Santa Cruz, Sean Brookman. Paul, how much nerves do you think you'd have if you were an amateur player playing with Ricky Wysocki, Garrett Gerthy, Paul McBeth? Well, I mean, at one point we were AMs playing with pros, and it was awful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, was. I remember it being, um, yeah, pretty, pretty intimidating for sure. It's also a great opportunity to show the world what you got, and some people – Really thrive in that environment. Forehand here. That's a cannon. Oh, my <laughs> God. That's pretty nice good. Shot. That's really This good. is a sketchy forehand hole. I mean, all as Bring we said, the all the trouble is right. Wow. Winner, I mean, if you got the power for that, going over that tree with Anheuser, you really will match the hill by the time the disc Heiser's back. Not a bad play if you got it. That's a laser beam. Ground play should be real nice, too. Oh, yeah. That's fine. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Garrett, did he go out of bounds? No, he's just so close to the out of bounds. And this is going to be tough. Almost plays like OB. Yeah, there's no, I mean, there's nothing there. Basically one low ceiling line, but you can't, I don't even know if you can throw that with the, the grass as high as it is there where he was. The forehand again? Wow. And a pretty good effort, but his Masters Cup is going to start, his title defense is going to start with a bogey. Hi -ya. Hi -ya. Yes! yes. Cool. <laughs> Looked like we paused the footage there for a second. That, that pre-putt. I love that. Absolutely frozen, that but sick. drills the putt. The nerves, obviously, he's handling them. That was fantastic. He's like, I'm, I'm the champ. Rick feeling the nerves oh, after wow. seeing that yeah. putt. That, you know, you're, when you're standing at like a 17-degree incline, that's not too surprising to 
be a little bit off balance there. That could have been part of the issue there, but Ricky normally handles that. It's a great point, Jeremy. You know, on these hills, having that push off foot, it, when it's on that slant, your balance can oh, definitely totally. push you in the different, uh, yeah, completely different direction than that just straight forward push off that you're used to. And I mean, a couple inches from 30 feet off can end up, you know, a good six inches at the basket. So. Sometimes you see people go with a little straddle line yeah. just to kind of get their balance. Looking at hole two, par three, 276 feet, a little steeper uphill, if anything, than the last one. So a lot of trees that can be hit. Again, that prevailing slope down to the right is a big, big factor. If you do hit a tree and kick right, unlikely that you'll even be able to make par. These guys are going to go backhand up that middle gap, I'm guessing, and try to get a little friendly skip up to the left. Both these holes are going up about 40. This one's actually going up 45 feet in elevation. But this is only stretched out over 276 feet, so it feels so much more intense. But don't tell Macbeth that. Wow. Great shot. Okay, so where are we going here? This looks like a, some kind of overhand. Looks like a tomahawk. Interesting grip. Yeah, really. I don't I don't know how he's holding the disc, but it doesn't look like any forehand I've really seen. Maybe like the curled finger grip. I would have loved to see that finish. It looked like it had a little momentum. Right there. Yeah, Sean's got power. This is too turned. Yeah, and it catches those low bushes on the right. But, I mean, it within Ricky's range if he can have some sort of stroke. It's a scary putt to run up that hill. It's a good recovery from Garrett. Okay. I'll go ahead and say that's a scary putt, too. I mean, it's a putt. If you're sure. not tapped in on this one, this is a frightening green. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> wow. Good effort from Rick. And this next putt actually is going to be tough because yep. he has that nice up and down stroke and anything you miss past the basket. Oh boy, where Ooh. where he missed? Uh, it's going to be a low ceiling. Yeah, he's going to have to change his putting style depending on how far he went. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, this is going to have to be a line drive zip. And that. Oh, my word. <laughs> wow, what a great start for Paul, and what a terrible start for Garrett here. And a pretty good start for Sean. I mean, great start. <laughs> yeah. yeah, huge putt on hole one. Hayaz it right in the basket from forty feet. The fact with that a sidearm. Yeah, that he got it with a sidearm. <laughs> so like, nasty. So sick. I'm inspired. On to hole three, along the spine here at the top of the hill of the park, three hundred and fifty-four feet dead ahead. A little bit of wind, sometimes a factor here. Big slopes on both sides. Two meters definitely in play as all those trees that you see that look just right there ground level, they're actually pretty tall, but they're off to the side of the fairway. Oh boy, it's turning for me. Ooh, oh, and it's God. turning. He says it's lucky, but it doesn't really look <laughs> that lucky. Yeah, when it doesn't hit anything, it really goes right down the middle of the fairway and is shaped the way you designed the shot to be thrown. I don't see how luck comes into play, but this shot's tough. You have to start it right, Lotta bring it left. Oh, no. This could get two meters. This could go down the mountain. could just fall down to the ground and have an easy putt approach. A lot of things can happen there. Could hit the spotter. Mm -hmm. 
really. A little bit low yeah, here sure. for the mid range. Yeah, we had a little bit. I mean, that flag's not blowing much, but just a little bit of that headwind coming down this tunnel fairway, and it makes that shot selection so tough. Oh, definitely. That's the thing about this place is so swirly are the winds. You can have a headwind on like seven different holes consecutively that are all going in different directions. Or on seven different putts on the same hole. <laughs> <laughs> I've experienced that myself. <laughs> oh, oh, gee. Man. Wow. He's my favorite in the game at that shot. A lot of people try to do that, but no one does it like G. Well, that looked almost exactly like G. I know. <laughs> it's, but Ricky has the power to putt those, right? Yeah. And, and G just like has that smooth toss. Yeah, he was way down there. That's a good little recovery shot. And Paul is in McBeast mode. That was quick. Yep. That was efficient. Look out, world. Three in a row. Oh. A little high, but... Okay, Rick's, in. <laughs> Rick's putting adventures so far have been a little squirrely. We had that miss on one, and two was dancing over the rim, and three was a little high. When he gets settled in, I'm sure things are going to be just fine. Garrett in for par, but man, does he need a birdie. Yeah, you just can't get behind a De La. Once you start getting, when you're over par, it feels so tough to get those those strokes back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. Here we are, top of the world. Take a look at the view as we fly down on the fourth par three, 516 feet, significantly downhill the entire way. You have a lot of options here, straight at the basket with a putter or mid range, huge backhand hyzer out wide to the right, sweeping back, or even a low forehand down the left side, trying to stay above the oak trees and swing in towards the basket. See if Macbeth can continue this hot start here. He's going with the ultra wide high and a little bit of a left to right win made this difficult to get all the swing that you want back. But he's done okay. He got all the swing, but he didn't quite get the distance. It yeah, looks that's, like. that's that, the hard part. Is is that getting in that the circle though? I looked about L 40 to me, but yeah. I'm not sure. Okay. This is floating away. Yeah, four hole six. Oh, okay. Oh. When has there ever been a good day law break? That was one. That was sweet. Yeah, until you wedge in those things. Yeah. You've done that before, haven't yeah. you? Yeah. I've seen pictures. Go in. Great shot from made, Rick. Yeah, made that look extra easy. Garrett, can he claw one of those strokes back? He got a nice preview from Paul. Let's see if he can make the correction. Uh, get over that. No. That's the, wow. That's a, that's a one mistake. Does Did it, it get down? So he's over okay. at the T of old for old hole six. Yeah, old two. Is not swinging enough. That's 45. Mm. Man. Looked good out of the hand, just didn't get the drop that he needed. Yeah, full commitment for sure, but that, that's really tough to see Garrett start off with three bogeys here in the first four. But on the exact other side of that, right here, Macbeth, long putt to get to four down through four. So good. Wow, great putt. What a start. Yeah, great control, good speed right in the corner. 
always holds that follow through. 40, 40 to 45 feet, it's a long way to hold that follow through, but he always holds it in until it goes through the chains. Can he collect Ooh. a birdie? Oh, that would have been a nice one to get after that good break. And Ricky is officially on the board here. 2021 Masters Cup. One thing about Daylaw is they're simple enough. You birdie them. We've probably all birdied every hole for sure. Mm -hmm. But nice. it just doesn't give them up. It doesn't like to give up twos. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, even on the oh, easiest yeah. holes, yeah. you can, you, you know, that you have your stock shot that you throw it a thousand times, you throw it, and then it just gets in your head and a little pull here or a little early there, and then it's just a little bit offline. That's his course. Man. Yeah, that's what we're seeing right now with G. It's just barely off. And this is another hole. The, the, the margin is razor thin here on the fifth. 315 going uphill, but you got the low ceiling, the high floor with all the retaining walls, and then this log at the end about 40 feet short. So it just takes so many things going perfectly <laughs> to find your way through all of these trees and all the way up to the green. It's just it's a carnival of obstacles. It really is. It, not only do you have an uphill tee pad that you have to kind of get your balance and your momentum going through it, you're going uphill 25 feet through all yeah. those things. It's just so many things you you have to contend with. Only 315 feet, and it's one of the hardest birdies to get on the course. John pr has proven he's got the power to get there, and that flex line down the right side opens up a bit more than I think for the backhand. That was close. Oh, I so liked close. what I saw there. That was turning. It had speed. Just a little lower. Is it? Oh, man. Just got to beat that one, and it's just perfectly online. And a bad kick. G has to go to another forehand lean out. Oh, my gosh. He rolled all the way back oh, there. No. And this is going to be... This is going to be another bogey. I mean, unless he throws it in from 70 feet. It's amazing how fast it happens, huh, Nate? Yeah, I mean, it can't. It has to stop soon. This is this is really, really tough. More than likely, four over through five holes. And Ricky's looking like he's going to be staring down a bogey. He's got about maybe 17 feet in elevation here from 80. Yeah, that'll be a bogey. Ooh, he got a little piece. For a joke, man. Come on, G, throw it in. Come on. Oh, oh wow. Boy. For five in a row? Oh. oh, God, that basket looks so big to him right now. Uh, I can't imagine there's been many occurrences where there's only been one birdie in the entire field, but today was that day. There was only one birdie. His name, Jesse Kerfeld, and it was a throw-in from 60 feet. It's a nice birdie. <laughs> it's just pretty incredible. I mean, you can see the basket right there in front of you. It's only 315 feet, but like we said, there's just so many things you have to get past, and it's just a ridiculously challenging hole. Gaining a stroke on the entire field? Uh, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> hole six, par three, 270 feet, and it's the hill again. I mean, these distances don't mean anything because 315 on the last hole might as well say 415. 270 here might as well say 405. That's how far these holes play. You're going all the way up the hill, hard break to the left, and then right behind this basket, three feet behind this basket, it just starts going down into the abyss. It's a it's an instant portal to Santa Clara. I feel like, honestly, probably advantage Sean. Beautiful shot there. Sure. With that sidearm. And even though that was a great shot from Paul, he still has huge, big-time decisions to make there because he didn't get He's going Tommy. Circle. 
Still, advantage Sean. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah. Yeah, I love the overhand play here. It is a huge way to cut out that distance and the shape that is made on this fairway. And one thing I know about Sean is he's not afraid of a little action behind the basket. I just feel like that's the kind of guy he is. Well, did you see his shirt? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just straight across the front. <laughs> death butt. So, yeah, you're looking for a death butt at that mm -hmm. point. Ricky takes kind of a – I don't know if it's a good roll or a bad roll. It's just kind of a roll. It didn't really hurt him that much. He did hit those trees. He wasn't going to get up there in birdie position. There you go. Get yes, past it. yes. Okay. I mean, it's a very scary putt, but it's a birdie mm -hmm. putt. Yeah, and he doesn't have death putt on the front of his jersey. <laughs> Ricky, it's a little hard to see, but if you could get a little closer, the detail on that shirt is actually a ton of little dinosaurs. Yep. And I saw him telling people about it. Not that he's like going up to them, but he, I saw him get, receive at least 10 compliments. I, I walked right up to him, and I, when I saw that there were dinosaurs, I was immediately in a better mood. Yep. And he's I was got, already in a good mood. He's got raptors on there. He's got it all. Come on, Garrett. Come on, dude. Mm. I love this dude. I like the the pre putt. I mean, it's the importance of routine, right? Sure, we're going to have people in the comments like, uh, thought the video paused. <laughs> I want but him it's like <laughs> he's doing his thing. I want him to serve me a whiskey drink at a pirate bar. Like there's something about that look that I just feel like this dude is going to fit in at a niche bar where everyone's dressed like pirates. That's that's a ridiculous thing to say. I understand that. I'm just telling you that's just how I feel at this moment. Animal 7. <laughs> That's how it's it goes. A dusty, <laughs> dusty hole on the seventh. Par three, at 354. This one's going slightly downhill. It's actually kind of a lot downhill, but in terms of daylight, it feels slight. Uh, you can go up the middle with putter or mid range and try to just get down there with a little turnover, try to we find your way through these last trees. Or you can go with the high forehand that I'm sure we're going to see right now as we see Sean take the tee pad. Ooh. Oh, it's very high. Bartender Jack. And this oh. was a moment that you know, I'm I'm <gasps> look at what I'm saying right now. That there. was you. That was the that was the call. You we're, asked me to move. We're waiting in a backup as we see Paul go to that mid range. Oh, you did it again. Just get to the ground. He's worried about the two meter. He gets down. But yeah, we were standing there and I said, Jerem was doing something on the phone and I said, Hey man, let you gotta move. You're in the death zone. And we moved and not fifteen seconds later. <laughs> Did Sean's this come flying in right where Jerm had just been? And here comes another one into the death zone, unless he gets a nice little kick. Oh. Got a little bit eh. of a slowdown. Yeah, that's about 73 trees between the basket and Ricky's lie. Just a little raptor leg trot away. This is a little bit right. I need to be fortunate. Oh, nice kick. Okay. Long, long look. Yeah. If I throw the Straight down. <laughs> Paul is getting really greedy now. Should have not have carried it at all. Oh, that was so in, man. Maybe hit one of those last Douglas firs coming in. Or are, they, are those some of those red pines? I'm going pine here. Perfect for Dela, you know. Ooh, wow. That one stayed in. Good par putt from Paul. So that'll be four Pauls. Four Pauls on this hole. <laughs> uh, you know what I meant to say. Comes the samples that I worked hard on this time around. I think of as like the chord of the song.
I'm Paul Uliberry with today's hole breakdown. Hole eight is one of the most unique holes we'll play all year. When sidearm roller is the play, you know there's something fishy going on. This par three is riddled with roots and bushy trees. And with the two meter rule in play, it's no surprise why you'll wanna keep the disc on the ground. Is luck on your side? Let's see how it plays out. Oh my gosh. That was hard to... Oh my goodness. Whoa, hey, now. This guy's got a different level that we did not know about. That is such a crazy, unique shot. Oh, and it stayed up big. <laughs> That's the problem with going super high here. But yeah, he was going for that big turnover, force over, forehand flexing back. Oh, boy. This needs some luck, too. Paul knows it. Needs to get to the ground. I told these guys to throw the side on roller. <laughs> <laughs> There's something fishy going on. <laughs> Oh my no. goodness. Thank you. This and could be pretty good. Stuck. Yeah, just needs to avoid the catchy coastal live oaks. Sweet. And he does. Oh. Maybe. I think that yes, might stop. Maybe. That was so a fantastic roll if it stopped there. Garrett is drifting left. Oh, now flying left off the kick. I mean, something's got to kick into gear here for Garrett, like now. Yeah, because this is bad. He's in danger of another bogey right now. This is a very, I mean, this could be, if this was a tee pad here, this would be one of the hardest par threes. Sit. Sit. Oh, no. That's going past Ricky's. Yeah, he's maintaining a, a slight sense of humor right now, but yeah, there's not many good feelings going on inside that man's body right now. I hope he can get up and down and. That's, Start getting some birdies. That's going to be a little tester right there from Sean. That wasn't a great layup from where he was. And that's something that we've we've talked about many times. That's something that Dayla does to you is we see Paul execute perfectly, but the fear of the drop off will cause you to short the approach, and then you leave yourself twenty footers, the most frustrating kind of twenty footer. As we see Garrett mm -hmm. unable to connect and not really surprised. That's super tough from down there. Ricky did not stop. Yeah, I guess not. Come on, man. Just make a stupid putt. That would be considered a stupid putt if you made yeah, it. Yeah, for hey, sure. We'd there. be talking about just exactly <laughs> yeah. how stupid that putt was if you hit that. Dude, this guy is incredible. What a four there. I mean, if you told him that he was going to be beating Garrett Gerthy by six shots after Garrett gets this bogey through eight holes... I mean, he was beating him by six going through seven holes. I mean, there's no way he would have ever believed that. I mean, that's nothing against his game. It's just um, yeah, a testament to how good Garrett is and also just oh, that's just an incredible start to have the tee box with Ricky and Paul on the card. He's picking he's up right well. where he left off, winning the amateur event. Well, I mean, he's beating Ricky so far. That's a two-time world champ. Yeah, that's Dude's not so bad. He's wow. balling out. Hole 9, par 3, 393 feet. This one starts out almost flat, but then right around here, it starts to break downhill. And you've got a really, really thick area on the left. That's kind of the collection point for a backhand, right-hand thrower, where you get in there and it can get really tricky if you're even 10 to 15 feet in. And then behind the basket, it takes another really serious drop down into the abyss again. Under it. I know we're on nine, but I feel like i got to give a shout-out to Luke Humphreys and Chris Boswino, who were the only two birdies in the field on hole eight, formerly hole four on this course. This looks beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Wow. Absolutely perfect. Wow. That was so good. I love watching a low shot that mm -hmm. crests a hill, and it's just like hovercrafting its way down the hill. That was so cool. Incredible. Wow, look at this. The tomahawk trying to go for the slide. It doesn't really get it. I'm guessing Sean doesn't have much of a backhand. That's what I'm learning so far. Get low. Low. Be the one. And that's going to be most likely another par for Garrett. We cannot wait very much longer for Garrett to start getting birdies. This is crazy. Looks nice. 
Yeah, good touch. I mean, here's the thing that's impressive about what's going on with Garrett right now. I mean, I mean, we don't need to focus too much more on the man. He's struggling right now. But look how he's he's handling himself. He's just focusing. He's trying his hardest on the next shot. He's not throwing a temper tantrum, which, you know, I mean, we expect these guys not to. They're professionals. But it can be easy to do that. When, when you're the defending champion, there's a lot of pressure on you. You know you can play these courses as well. We all know that. It's not happening right now, and he's maintaining... <laughs> Uber professionalism. Great birdie for Ricky. Ricky, one of nine birdies in the field on hole nine. Smaller field size this week here than what we're used to. We've played yeah. many of our disc golf yeah, pro tours and national tours this season with about 130 or so players. This week we are playing with 76. So that that cash line is going to be a lot smaller than it has been at our other tournaments. I think it adds a little pressure. There's the, the Most of the cream is still here, yep. but the, the chaff, not so much. Correct. Hole 10, par 3, 348 feet. This one a little bit downhill. There's also bad rough and slope on the right side, OB on the left side. You'd like to throw sort of a straight mid-range that hits a little short. It tends to give that little bit of anti-skip to the right and kind of jump down by those three trees next to the basket. This is the part of the course where you can kind of get on fire and start separating yourself from the field because here you can throw the good shots, land softly, and make your birdie putts to where there are some, I wouldn't say luck, a lot of luck's involved on the other holes, but there's a lot of luck involved on the other holes. And here, <laughs> and here you can... I don't want to say it, but I'll say it. <laughs> and here you can, you know, in the next like five or six holes, you can actually start gaining a little momentum. It's so fun to watch Paul throw these kind of shots because it does not look like he actually even threw. It just guides it, and he just hopes. <laughs> and the disc does what he hopes it to do. It just seems so incredibly effortless. Now down to the right over there where he kicked is not easy. Uh, the farther you go down there, just like anywhere on these cliffs, the uh, worse it's going to be. This Here we go. This is it. Too much Come on. turn, really. This is going to be over there by that. Um, oh, dang. Just yeah. never right hazard. <laughs> but that's nope. a pretty carefree putt from right there. Yeah. Maybe yeah. not when you're five over, though. No. Yeah, but I feel like, yes, you're correct. I mean, that basket does seem small sometimes when you and you haven't seen anything going yet. But that was a really good yeah. shot. Very good shot. Yeah. But there's also this element of, like, what am I even sure. nervous about anymore? Just put it in. And sure. sometimes that kicks in. Sure. Not this time. Thank you. Thank you. This is a must make. It really is. Yeah. I mean, he has holes, you know, to fight to get back to an under par stretch, but. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of them out here, and it with the stress that he has on this round, like. Big time putt right here. That's a huge yes. putt. No, and, and you're right. There's not. This is a three round event. The f the one thing that Garrett could maybe be telling himself right now is that these are 24 hole rounds. Mm -hmm. So you know there are of more holes than there would be if this were just a traditional 18 hole course. But still, you're right. It's it's not like he's he's gonna have to work hard. He can't bogey anymore. Yeah, that's done. That's out of the equation. Yeah, sure. and you're 100 percent right. That's what he's thinking is this is 24 holes. I can get on a streak. I can get back to under par. The old adage, there's a lot more golf. That definitely applies here at De La. Looking at the tee shot for hole 11, a short par 3 at just 215 feet. It's a tight gap off the tee. You want to go up the hill and just slightly drift to the right. And I do mean slightly because this is one of the nastier drop-offs on the whole course. I know I say that every hole. <laughs> but uh, it's just kind of how it is out here. And so if you go right... You can easily be 100 feet down there below the hole. There's like 
10 holes that are tied for the scariest green on the, on the entire course, yeah. and this is definitely one of those. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks, dude. Oh, miss it. That's a putt. Dang it. He did miss it. Mm -hmm. And that is a butt. Is he doing our job? Thummer? Thummer now. Oh, boy. This guy's a madman. It's going to work. Yep. Yeah. Oh, wow. 215 feet. That's a lot of control to be able to get that thing full barrel roll and get it to sit. Wow. This is the one. G's going to get things going in the right direction. Oh, I like it. Yep. And the card's pulling for him, too. You know that you know that they want they want to see the good golf. They feed off of good disc golf as well. So they, you know, everybody's rooting for G right now. Oh, oh boy. Oh. Wow. How many players does that thing continue to roll for? <laughs> I feel like that's. There it is. It, I was scared for a second, but it's in now. <laughs> good birdie. <laughs> and the poor guy, you know, when you have those putts, it's you're still not taking a lot of confidence into the next hole, yeah. you know, with the putting stroke. But it's yes. in there, and you're like, okay, I did my job. This is my job yeah. still. Yeah. It's in there. I'm trying. It's hard to get a birdie that you get bad feelings from. <laughs> but that one's squeezing in. That might be one of those. But he's done it. And uh, another nice putt from Sean. I'm guessing this is coming in as, like, number two or number three of the easier holes on the course. Correct. It's the third easiest, 2.46 average. And that average was bumped down just a little bit lower thanks to the help of Paul Oman. Yeah, the exactly. only ace. Tall Paul with the ace. Congratulations. That's awesome. Hole 12, par 3, 320 feet. This is a brand new position this year. There is an early mandatory that stops the players from going way wide to the left side. The basket now cleared out over here on the right. Opens up a little bit more of a forehand play up the middle. Also, backhand turnover is a great option. Again, big drop off right side. That looks really good. Really, really good. Something that Ricky has been working on for years now, and now I feel like when we come to holes like this where optional sidearm backhand play and you see him go to the backhand, that's now his skill. Shocking. You know, that's a better yeah. skill that he wow. has. Wow. Sean has skills. Yeah, and this is not – w it looks to maybe the naked eye or to the viewer like a – oh, boy, bad kick. It looks like it could be considered a forehand hole, but it's actually a way better backhand turnover mid-range hole, the way that it's shaped and the way that the green is sloped. No, oh, exactly. And so for him to be able to just be like, nope, it's the right play, yeah, and then parked. easily do, the, in the past we've seen him force those sidearms just to get the look. Oh, yes. I was, th I was talking of, about Sean, but, yeah, you're talking about Ricky. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. Got off track there with uh No, no, but you're right, though. Ricky's ability to go either way, which that's – We've talked about it many times. It makes him the best scrambler in the Whoa. business. Sick. Wow. Sick. Where was that line? <laughs> that was crazy. He went up high over the top of some of those trees? That was wild. Paul's gone on a little cold streak. One go, birdie in his go, last. Go, go. Not that Whoa, kind of go. Don't say oh, go too many times. Yeah. Just a... Uh, not when you're really that worried about rolling, but it can get away from you quick. Good save. Thank you. Save. That is a crazy save. Just that catch cam shot of him just throwing the disc out of screen and then it just whipping back into the shot the last second. That was so cool. What a birdie. 
three under. Fantastic. Let's look at that <laughs> leaderboard. It. Speaking of the scores, Adam Hammes. Whoa, eight under through 12. James Conrad, six. A slew of players, including one big Jay Coling in there at five under. Wow, a lot of good golf being played. So many players at five. We have 12 more holes in this round, though. And some of the big signature shots at De La still coming up. Thank you, as always, to the Founders Club. Come right back and catch us for the back 12.